Hello, my name is Sachin Bhatnagar and I am an educator and a developer from India. Welcome to the world of Node.js. You are here because you have heard about Node.js and are keen on learning more about it. Well, I have got you covered. Let's talk all about Node.js and more. Introduced in 2009, Node.js is JavaScript that runs on a server. Node.js lets you write real-time, high-performance applications that scale up beautifully and are able to handle a large number of concurrent requests easily. It's not surprising that sites and companies like LinkedIn, Microsoft and PayPal are using Node.js to power their awesome services and apps. And more and more people are joining this bandwagon. The best part is Node.js is relatively new and there are tons of jobs for developers who can harness the awesomeness of Node and deliver the next generation of dynamic super fast apps. You can be one of them. If you have written code in PHP, ASP.NET or even Java on the server or have so much as heard about these things, then this course will help you get started with Node.js in no time. When I started learning Node.js, well this is how I looked. Once I got my app running somehow, I was not sure how to deploy it on a server and there were questions, questions and more questions. Well, you guys be happy cats and enjoy as I walk you through so many things that make up an app's ecosystem around Node.js. I'll handhold you from the very basics all the way to the top. We'll write web servers, use streams, query databases, upload files, use authentication, manage sessions, use WebSockets for real-time communication, write modules, and so much more with Node.js. We'll write and deploy two full-blown apps, including a multi-room chat server and a photo gallery app. This is gonna be a lot of fun. But this course contains many more things than just Node.js. We'll learn about NoSQL and MongoDB, writing modular code, authentication using Facebook, resizing images on the server, and we'll go hands-on with deploying Node.js apps on Heroku, followed by Amazon's Elastic Compute Cloud Service or EC2, where we will also use Amazon's Elastic IP, Simple Storage Service and CloudFront. We'll also play with the awesome Cloud9 IDE with DigitalOcean's cloud hosting service and we'll also set up Nginx as a reverse proxy server and a load balancer so your Node.js apps scale up elegantly and never skip a request. And I'm not talking about flying at 60,000 feet. We'll dive into the ecosystem and go step by step so you don't miss a beat. This course is much more than Node.js alone. It's got all the technologies that you need to know before you can write and deploy apps in production. And here's the best thing. This course will always keep evolving so that you can come back to it anytime for updated videos, new topics and lots more. You'll get lifetime access to all screencasts, code samples and coding assistance. So join me as we discover all about Node.js and lots more. Installing Node.js on Windows is as easy as it can get. Just open your browser and head over to nodejs.org. On the Node.js website, click on the install button to download the Node.js installer for your flavor of Windows. When that's done, run the Node.js installer executable Hit next. Accept the license agreement. Hit next again. Select the path where you want Node.js to get installed. I do not like changing this, so I'll keep it this way. Hit next again and click install. Once done, hit finish and it's time to test the installation. Open the command prompt and type node followed by a space and hyphen v. Press enter and you should see the current version of node displayed on the prompt. Here we can see 0.10.33 as the current version displayed on the prompt. That's it.
you've just successfully installed Node.js on your Windows machine. Installing Node.js on a Mac is super easy. Open your browser and head to nodejs.org. On the Node.js website, we'll simply click on this big green install button to begin downloading Node.js for Mac. Let's go into our downloads folder where I already have a copy of the Node.js installer downloaded and ready. Just double click on this file to begin the Node.js installer. Keep clicking continue, agree to the software license agreement and type in your account password when prompted. Hit close when the installation completes. Now to test the installation, open the terminal Most languages like Java, Ruby and Python come with some sort of a mechanism for importing libraries and modules that provide ready to use methods and functions. This makes it easy for developers to write modules that can be distributed. Though natively, the current edition of JavaScript does not provide such a mechanism, the common JS project provides a way of enabling your JavaScript app to go modular. Node.js implements this common JS interface and thus you can download and import modules into your Node.js app and instantly get access to packaged functions, methods and features. This is how you import modules in Node.js app. You've seen this already, but the interesting bit is that you can write your own modules. For instance, here we are importing a module called math module. And this is how we wrote the math module. It's basically a JavaScript object that defines two functions, one for adding two numbers, the other for subtracting two numbers. All of this is exported out of the module using the module.exports feature as you can see here. To use the module, import the module into your app using the require method and then just call the functions from the imported JavaScript object using the object.function notation as shown here. Now, Node.js comes with a host of built-in modules that are required on a regular basis. So everything from file system access to server, streams and network related methods are readily available. Besides writing your own modules, you can also download modules and packages written by the Node.js developer community. That is where the Node Package Manager or NPM comes in. It is a single point repository of packages and dependencies that you can easily download into your project. When you install Node.js, the Node Package Manager installs along as a command line tool, allowing you to easily download modules when needed. We'll be using the NPM all throughout this course, so this video will serve more as an introduction. The first thing you do with NPM is initialize, which creates an important file called package.json. This is done by the npm init command which asks a basic set of questions and generates this file. Besides other things, an important component of this file is the dependencies section which lists the modules and packages that we have downloaded from the npm repository for use in our project. When you deploy your app to the server, you do not upload these modules. You simply upload your app along with the package.json file and this file then allows you to easily download all dependencies. Our app allows you to log in with your Facebook account. But before we can create that functionality in the app, what you need to do is you need to go to developers.facebook.com and make sure you're logged into your Facebook account. And you need to go into the apps section and you have to create a new app. Okay, so I'm going to click here. And I'm going to type in the name of the app, which in this case will be Chatcat. And you can choose a category if you want. So this would be a communication app. And click on Create App. Type in the capture. And give it a couple of seconds. 
Now, once your app is created, we need two very important values that Facebook provides. So, so the first one is the app ID and the second one being the app secret. Okay. So what we'll do is we will copy the app ID and we'll go back to our development.json and the production.json file. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new key called FB or you can call it Facebook and set it to another object where we'll have the first key as app ID where we will set this to the app ID that Facebook provides for our app and the second one would be the app secret and let's just get this value as well let's copy and paste it over here now one more thing that we require is a callback URL so once Facebook authorizes your login uh, it will return the user back to your app so that URL